الحمد لله رب العالمين واشهد ان لا اله الا الله ولي الصالحين واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه اما بعد respected brothers and sisters in islam all viewers i'm imam sharif of finland and i greet everyone with the greeting of islam assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh all thanks and praise are due to Allah. I bear witness that He is the only one with no associate, and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is His servant and messenger. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in the Quran, "Ya ayuha al-ladina amanu, ittaqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun." O ye who believe, fear Allah the way He should be feared, and never die unless in the state of Islam. Allah says again, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul, and from that soul he created for him his partner, and from the twain he created for them their offspring. So fear your Lord from who you attain your sustenance, and fear the womb that bore you because Allah is watching over you. Allah says again, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu ittaqu allaha wa kulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum amalakum wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yutay allaha wa rasoolahu faqadi faza fawdan azima O you who believe here Allah and say good words, words of purity so that Allah will purify your deeds and forgive you your sins in the sense that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we read the best of words are the words of Allah and the best of guidance is the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and warn us against going astray because anyone who should involve in innovation will go astray and anyone who go astray will end up in the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and guide us onto the right track. <clears throat> uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, as you might have read from the beginning, uh, the importance or importance of purity in an Islam or purification or cleanliness in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us to understand that the deen al Islam is deen that is of light, a deen or a way of life that we have been taught by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam everything. Not only how to pray, not only how to fast, not only how to give zakah and go to Mecca, but rather the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us everything. And even to the extent that he taught us how to use uh, the washroom. Anything that we have to do concerning our daily life, he has taught us even how to go to bed and so on. So in this regard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum this day I have completed for you your deen, your way of life, your religion. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'amati and I have completed for you everything that concerns my ni'ma or my mercy or bounty on you. And then finally Allah chose for us wa radaytu lakum al-islam deena and I have chosen for you as a way of life and Islam. Correct. We talk about purification, uh, we will all maybe think about how to clean ourselves. That's good. How to purify yourself, how to wash yourself, especially when you want to go and pray, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu idha qumtum ila salati fagasilu wujuhakum wa aidiyakum ila al-marafiq. O you who believe, Whenever you are intending to pray or you want to pray, then you should wash. Then Allah started to tell us or instruct us on which parts of the body to wash. This is out of cleanliness or purification in order to go before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order to pray. Then again, and in case you are in the state of Janab or Janaba, meaning that you have had intercourse with your wife, then you should also. Uh, wash the whole body until Allah made us to understand that in case we don't have water then at that time you should use sand to uh, clean yourself either sand or a stone that is also 
uh, dusty, whether you can find sand on it in order to purify yourself. So all these are type of purifications or cleanliness that we can be able to purify ourselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we can be able to pray. The same applies to when you have to go to Mecca, uh, you have a type of purification, that means you wash yourself, just like you have intercourse, but the intentions are different. So all these type of different type of purifications, we use water. Good. Now the question here is that, how clean does that make us in order to be able to advance towards our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala with everything or with all our needs. In short, how clean does that make us? We have to understand Allah does not need anything from us except that we come to him in a state of purity. In a state of purity, whereby you are very clean and at that time you can be able to advance towards Allah. When Musa a.s. was getting close to the mountain, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed him to remove his shoes. And in case when he gets closer to the mountain, then you see his law and the story as we've all been told. Good. So he had to purify himself because the shoes are not supposed to be on him, or he doesn't have to put the shoes on while he goes to his Lord. All these are different types of purifications, but they all actually are centered on one thing that is to look clean before you go to your Lord. Then the question as I asked from the beginning, does that make us clean enough to get closer to our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever we want, we will be given or we will get? That's the question. And the answer will be the lesson, inshallah, of today. If we compare ourselves to the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if I say the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm making reference to the Sahaba or the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like I mentioned, if we compare ourselves to them, the clothes we wear today, they never wore them. I'm talking about the standard of the clothes that we wore today, or we wear today, due to the way they are being manufactured and how clean they look. If we talk of white of today, it doesn't used to be white of those days. If we talk about the way we clean ourselves when we go to wash ourselves, let's say in the bathroom and so on, it doesn't used to be in the, it didn't have that possibility in the days. So, and also if we talk about how clean we look whenever we go to Jum'ah prayer, the clothes that we wear, how clean they are, and also our mosque, how clean they are, how much decorating, I mean, the decorations here and there, uh, these didn't need to be in the days of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, in short, we say, if we talk of purity, cleanliness, it means that, excuse me to say, we may look, we may look more clean than them. But the question here is that they, in their days, were more purified and very clean than us today why we will understand that as time goes on in this regard purification are divided into four different categories one purifying the your internal as a human being then the purification of the parts of this body purify the body by preventing the body from being dirty being dirty here has nothing to do with dirty by maybe putting your hand in something that is uh, will, will, will make uh, your hands dirty or you walk in the mud and so on. No. Clean your hands from, for instance, stealing. Stealing is dirty. You don't have to steal. Purify your hands from stealing. Purify your mouth so that whenever you open your mouth, you can speak words that are will be pleased by Allah. So purification of the mouth is not to speak what will anger Allah. Purification of the ears is not to listen to what will anger Allah. Or Allah will not be pleased with you. Purification of your feet here doesn't mean water. Is that you don't walk or you don't go to where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not want to find you or would not like to see you and so on. So the purification of the internal that is 
to purifying your heart, making sure that your heart is very clean in anything that you want to do. Purify your mind. This is internal. Purify all that are inside you, even your stomach, so that you don't put haram in your mouth. So this is another type of purification. Before we talk about purification of using water to clean the body physically. Then of all these, the most important of all the purifications of either the water by washing the whole body or purification of you being clean in the way that all parts of your body will be clean or finally what is in you internally, which of them is very important. With this we make reference to the Sahaba or the companions of the Prophet Muhammad we read or we were taught that the Sahaba or the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their days they used to have a situation whereby someone had only one cloth or one shirt or one dress that he and his wife the dress will be able to cover their shame to the extent that he had to go and pray whenever he goes to pray he hurry back home so that he can give that same cloth to his wife for her to be able to offer prayer one dress for a man and his wife can we compare ourselves to such a person because we have so many clothes we have so much clean no we cannot compare ourselves why that is what we will understand inshallah then in those days the sahaba most of them used to have maybe two okay clothes that they wear when they have to pray the same cloth that they wear also when they go out or when they had to go about their activities remember in those days they had to struggle sometimes they would be on the horseback traveling from one city to the other with all the sweat on their body with all the smell on their body with all the fatigue on their, on their body and they still pray so it means that the importance of your clothes being clean is not having that high merit than something that may be more important that we have to know why because these were people when they speak and let's see here i am when they ask allah give them and the says in the quran addressing the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when someone came to ask him messenger of allah how far are the distance between us and allah so that we can either shout in order to call Allah so that he can hear us or we only have to speak to him. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't give an answer to this question but rather Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent Jibreel Alayhi Salaam to answer the question himself. Then he said, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبِ If my servants or whenever my servants, my slaves, when they ask you of me then in the Qarib, I am very close to them. I always respond, I answer to the call of a caller whenever he asks me. So it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you don't need to shout, but rather you need to only ask Allah. But whether your words will reach Allah, or whether your words will be accepted by Allah, or whether Allah will answer you, will depend on how clean you are between you and Allah. Who said so? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, sometimes you will see someone struggling to make ends meet. He wants to accumulate money so that he can be able to take care of himself, take care of his family, take care of his needs. He will travel from the north to the south, from the east, to the west seeking what is lawful so that he can be able to maintain his life after that he would go and sit under a tree when he had already suffered and didn't get anything then he would be saying ya allah ya allah oh allah oh allah i'm struggling and still there is no answer then the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued and said he will be doing this while his food is haram 
is what he drinks is haram. The clothes he wear is haram. Where he sleep is haram. How would Allah answer him? From this hadith, we can understand that it's not how clean you are outwardly or externally, but how clean you are internally. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa messenger of Allah. He had already served the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for 10 years. He said, messenger of Allah, ask Allah so that I will be among those who, whenever they ask him, he will not waste time in answering our demand. What did the messenger of Allah do? He didn't tell, tell him or give him an antidote that will be only of, uh, beneficial for Anas because he had been his servant. No. Rather, he gave an answer that will benefit the whole of the Ummah. He said, Anas, clean your food and Allah will answer your call. Because someone will lift a piece of food, put it in his mouth, that is of haram, and Allah will not answer his call for 40 days. La ilaha illallah. So if the food is not pure, it's not a lawful food, it's not halal, Allah will not listen to you for 40 days. What is halal? The source of the money you use in buying the food, whether it is legal or illegal, that will depend on how you have actually accumulated that money. The source of money that you've used in building your house or putting up a building. Source of money that you use in buying your car. The root of the money you use in order to buy your furniture in your room, all these will have an effect whenever you have to go closer to Allah. He said, Anas, clean your food. So the food had to be what? Halal. Not only how you buy and what you buy, sometimes you can have money that is halal, but the food you're going to buy is haram. You don't care whatever type of food you eat. Whether it is legal, whether a Muslim can eat the food or not, you don't care. So if you eat and you don't care from what or from where you acquire your money and you don't care from whatever you put in your stomach, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, just as you don't care, Allah will not care in which of the doors of hell he will throw you in it. So brothers, sisters in Islam, we have to understand Purification of the internal is very, very important. We talk of purity. We like to clean ourselves, look good. Our women wear nice gold, nice necklaces, nice everything. But whether the sources of all these monies are good, we don't know. In any case, let's tell you that everything is halal. But are we clean in our mouth today? You will never hear us to speak. Whenever we talk about people, whenever we talk, we talk about people. Whenever we speak, we speak dirty words, insulting people, saying things that are actually not right. The tongue, whenever you wake up in the morning, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that the rest of the body seek refuge with Allah from the tongue every day that you wake up from your sleep. Why? Because the tongue is the source of so much evil. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he mentioned about the dangers of the tongue, that it might lead someone to the hell fire, then they asked him, he said, someone will come on the day of judgment and he has a mountain full of rewards. Then someone will come and say, Allah, he insulted me. Oh Allah, he spoke behind me. Oh Allah, he did this and that, all the sins of the tongue. Then when they come to report, before they return to wherever they are supposed to be, Allah will reduce from your good deeds and give it to them. It will be transferred to them. Then the Prophet mentioned that in case they are more than necessary, whereby all your good deeds are now over, you don't have any more good deeds, 
when they come to report about the sins you have committed by it either insulting them or speaking behind their back or offending them in any way, then if they don't have any good deed they can reduce from your good deeds or the rewards, then the messenger of Allah said, their sins will now be reduced from their sins that they have committed in the world and transferred to you. And in the end of the hadith, he said, then you, you will be thrown into the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid. He said, one kalima, one word that you may say, you don't even think about it. You don't think about the danger of this word that you have said. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, it will throw you into the hellfire or it will cause your being put in the hellfire a death of 70 years. Or oh, as said by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you see, we have to clean them out. That you can never speak unless what? Unless what is pure. That is why one of the Salihin, one of the good people in the days of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they asked him about how you have to take care of the tongue. Then he said, Allah had given you two ears and one tongue. So that you speak little more than you listen. So that you listen more than you speak. But today, brothers and sisters in Islam, when you speak, immediately, you say, oh, this brother did, oh, that brother, I know, before you finish your sentence, he will come and complete what you are supposed to say and say it is something beyond it. So whenever they bring you a word concerning someone, then we put spices within the word and make it more evil. This is how much we can we make our, our mouth dirty to the extent that even you yourself, you fear to say, oh, yeah, Allah. Someone in the days of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed and called Allah with the name of Al-Ahad and la ilaha illa hu. There is no one but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he mentioned the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the names, the messenger of Allah is then said, who called Allah with this name? He said, me. He said, you have already called Allah with the highest and the most important name of Allah. Stop from there. Ask Allah whatever you want and Allah will give you. The tongue is pure, clean. We don't know anything either than to insult people. We insult our fathers, we insult our mothers, we insult everyone around, our, around us. The messenger of Allah says in his words that Allah curse or the curse of Allah be on anyone who insult his father, insult his parents. It's a message of Allah. How can someone insult his parents? He said, when you insult someone's father, then that will represent that you have insulted your father. And the curse of Allah is on you. And if you insult someone's mother, Allah will make it in the way that you have insulted your own mother, and that is a curse on you. And anyone who Allah curse, the hellfire, he will surely see it unless Allah accepts his repentance if only he repents. Brothers and sisters in Islam, why should only one word that you may say as the messenger of Allah had said? You don't even think about that word and that word will send you to the hellfire. Why is it that sometimes we don't have make dua ourselves? We say, mashallah, this guy is very faithful. Brother, make dua for me because you have had a good opinion about that brother. He doesn't insult people. He doesn't speak behind people. He is always pure. You see him walking. He doesn't talk about people. He's very clean. So you yourself know very well that you are dirty. So you're asking someone who is clean to make to offer. That is the only answer. It doesn't because he's a human being like you. But how is it that you go to him and ask him to make to offer? And this is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had already informed us. You can ask your brother to make to offer for you. So that is purification of the mouth of the mouth. Never say anything unless something that would please Allah. If you know that you're going to speak about someone, Allah says, Wala No one should backbite the other. Does any of you 
want to eat the dead flesh of his own brother, you should abhor. Definitely, you will not like to eat that flesh. Then you don't have to speak behind your brother. Then we have to purify our hands. Purification of the hands. You don't take haram. You don't give haram. Make sure whatever you do in order to get money, brother, make sure the money is clean. Make sure the money is pure. No matter how little the money is, what is important is barakah from Allah, mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how little the money is, if Allah bless the money, wallahi, you would use maybe $10 to do what someone has $100 and cannot be able to do. Why? Because Allah had already put barakah in it. One of the Sahaba in the days of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they migrated from Mecca to Medina, on their arrival in Medina, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then made every Meccan to have a Medinan brother as a friend. So that those of Medina who are known as the helpers will help those from Mecca who were known as the migrants or immigrants. So someone could give even a whole house to his brother because he had three, four, five houses. Someone to the extent of saying that look within my wives, I have so many wives, whoever you want, I will divorce her for you. Then one of the Sahaba, if I'm not mistaken, that is Ibn Masood, who he told his companion, who said, I can give you part of my wealth. See whatever you want, I will give you for the sake of Allah. Then he said, keep your wealth. Please direct me to the market. So he showed him or he directed him to the market. And this man started trading. In those days, the most expensive cloth that you could wear is to wear a woolen jacket. And so the man used to be a poor person, not poor to the extent that you may think of uh, someone who doesn't even have a shoe. No, he used to be a normal poor person that he didn't have wealth or he didn't, he didn't have anything that is beyond normal. So he, one day he started wearing wool. And the wife of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew this man. So when he saw him, he said, Oh, servant of Allah, oh you, why do you follow this worldly gains so much that you have already arrived at the standard of wearing wool, thinking much about this world as well? Then he said, Oh my mother, what can I do? Whenever in the morning I give one dinar, for instance, if I give one dollar or one euro for the sake of Allah, before the sun set, Allah will make me get benefit of 10 euros. Whenever I give one, Allah make me get 10. If I give 10, Allah make me get 100. Why? Because Allah promised that whatever good did you do, Allah will give you 10 times fold and they believe in it not like us if i want to give you one euro i say subhanallah this one euro uh, i think it can buy maybe uh maybe one gram of cement back home no why, why should i give it to you if i keep this one euro inshallah i'll save another one euro next week and another one euro and one euro and then maybe at the end of the month i can be able to at least accumulate 30 euros if you change it back in your own uh, currency in your country you can be able to buy one block of cement. Why should I give it to people? That is how Satan will make you to think. And Satan was the first person to use what is known as chaos. He made comparison with what you think. He said, look at Adam. I was created from fire and he created from sand. Who is he? That was how he started and it will remain. Today, whatever someone wants to go do good, he think this way. But even who what he does in his days was that he gave without fearing, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it as a rule. And since they believe in that, definitely Allah make it come true. Ali bin Abi Talib, when he went to buy fruits for his wife, 
The wife demanded for the food that she can eat while she was sick, so that, may Allah, so that maybe Allah would cure her. While he was on the road, he met someone who was poor, seeking for food, and seeking for the same grapes that he had in his hand. He gave him one. Then when he went home, when he arrived at home, he told his wife that this was what happened while I was coming. Then the wife said, maybe Allah will use the rewards of that grip that you gave to the poor to cure me. They had believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every occasion, every instant, every incident in their life had a meaning. Then while at home, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent someone with the same type of food. Ten grapes. When he arrived, he said, Oh Ali, Abi bin al Bitari, he knocked his door and made salam. Messenger of Allah has asked me to bring you something. What is that? This that he gave the nine grapes. He left one behind him, or uh, he hid one in his back, and then he gave he gave nine to him. Then he said, Where from these? Then the, uh, the, the, the man answered, Messenger of Allah, these were from the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu he said, No, the Messenger of Allah will not give me this. He said, why? He said, because I made sadaqah with one. And Allah said the rewards of sadaqah, one is ten. So I don't expect nine. Even though he was in need at that time, but he had believed in his heart that the words of Allah are true. Not like us, brothers, sisters in Islam. Then the man said, yes, actually they were ten. I was only trying to test your faith or try your faith. Then he removed the tenth one for him. This used to be the people of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were very clean in their mouth clean in their hands, clean in their feet. There was a Sahabi who had problem in his feet, on his foot, he had an infection. And finally, part of that foot was amputated, maybe at the ankle. And when he gained conscious, he said, oh Allah, you know, I don't used to use this, this foot unless to places that will please you. Oh Allah, if you have taken a little, then how much have you remained or have you left for the Plenty. Mean that you've taken only part of my body. Then what is the reward you 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 you've given me for the rest of the of the body that I'm I'm carrying now? But if it is also a punishment from you, then Allah, I'm seeking forgiveness of you. They always thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in every instant. He didn't use to use the leg or the feet to go to anywhere unless places that would please Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So Allah bless the feet. And the place every part of their body. These were the people of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They purify the internal part of their body, then Allah purify the external, so that nothing they can do unless what is right. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has made us to understand that if you make wudu and you don't, if you want to make wudu and you don't get water, use the sand because Allah said so in the Quran. Does sand make you clean? If you look at it, you say no. But out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it makes you clean. But definitely, you cannot use uh, anything to clean your mouth, not to use toothbrush, but rather clean your mouth by abstaining from saying things that will not be pleased by Allah. And the same thing, don't listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be pleased with you. Just as you don't speak what is not right, you don't also listen to what is not right. Then again, internally, Make sure whatever you take inside your stomach is halal. Not only after uh, about the source of the of the income, but even when you go to the shop to go and buy. <clears throat> uh, we know that we don't have to uh, eat the meal that is not being slaughtered in the name of Allah. Uh, it, it came to an extent that when we are in Europe, then we say, okay, no problem, this is my situation. No, no, I will not do. The issue here is that if you leave yourself in a situation whereby you find that everything is impossible, then Allah will make it impossible. Allah says in, Allah, he says, uh, in an author, that I'm with the opinion of my servant. If he think good of me, I make it good. If he think bad, I make it bad. So while you are living as a community in Europe, you, you know, the number keep growing. So it comes to a time that you also have the right to leave because the, the, you used to be a stranger in that country and you definitely you become also part of the country. So you also have to have your right being uh, a Muslim. And Alhamdulillah, in these countries, they know that each and every one uh, of, 
practice this religion, whatsoever has to have his right in order to live in his way or in the way that he will, uh, he will also uh, feel happy. So while you try to struggle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. You can be able to arrive at, at, at a situation whereby you can have one soon as halal, uh, people, uh, uh, others will slaughter, and then you go to buy and so on. So alhamdulillah, this had, uh, the Arab uh, ishtihad or jihad that so many brothers have made struggle or they, they strive in order to make that we can be able to have what is halal. Alhamdulillah, today in so many European, European countries, uh, we have people who can be able to slaughter and then we have uh, halal, halal meat to eat. What I'm, why I brought this up is because of uh, what you don't have to stay uh, and say, oh, I don't see halal, so I don't have to eat halal. No. You have to struggle for halal, and if you do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make sure that uh, you get halal, and Allah will reward you in that way. And if you are the source of making halal to come into existence, anyone who is able to eat this halal today, tomorrow, no matter, no matter how long, Allah will reward you because you have already started with the struggle. Don't think about yourself alone. Think about others. Think about the generations to come and think about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you in return. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Do not eat what the name of Allah had not been announced or pronounced or recited on it, because it is dirty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Do not eat what the name of Allah had not been announced وَإِنَّ شَيَاطِينَ لَيُوْغُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ لُيُجَادِلُوكُمْ Because Satan is, is uh, uh, revealing unto or on his followers that they should challenge you so that you can you, you say, okay, no problem, you are here, just eat it, it's nothing. We are now living in a situation where but they'll give you all type of uh, reasons and all type of explanations as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's haram. If only you follow them, then you become partners of them. So Allah had already said something, make sure you follow the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will make it easy for you. So the stomach is very, very important. Whatever you put in your stomach, remember the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa anybody who takes a piece of food in his mouth that is not halal, Allah will not listen to you for a period of 40 days. What to be your situation if Allah doesn't listen to you for only one day? let alone not listening to you for 40 days that is a very very big calamity on you so brothers sisters in islam <clears throat> we should try to purify ourselves and out of the purification also is that whatever you use not only the internal also the external part of your body uh, needs to be purified the external part of the body also within you is that uh, let's try as much as possible to abstain from what is known as uh, fornication fornication is you know take a girlfriend take a boyfriend here and there and then you start playing around and thinking that oh uh, you are young or you thinking that okay you are in a situation whereby you can at least enjoy yourself and whatever you can think about it what you have to understand is that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam may mention that anyone who can guarantee me the safety of what is between his lips and what is between his laps or his thighs i will guarantee him paradise what are these two what is between your lips is your tongue that you don't use your tongue unless in what understand will be placed with you and what is between your laps or between your thighs is your private part that you don't put it into what allah will not actually uh be pleased with you meaning that you don't have to have intercourse with anyone unless your legal partner be you the man or be you the woman so uh this is also part of a very great purification that in case you commit adultery that is a very great sin between you and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh and that needs a very big uh recompension between allah subhanahu wa ta'ala between you and allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give you except what is known as punishment. So uh, in any case, to abstain from the sin is more easier than repenting. Because if you repent, you don't know whether Allah will accept or not. To abstain from, the, uh, from committing the sin is not easy as well because you have to fight Satan. And Satan is not a loose short soldier. Satan is a very strong soldier, but you have to fight Satan also with this help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can be able to uh, succeed. <clears throat> 
Then within the situation whereby you can be able to clean yourself, it's not only when you as an individual. We made mention about cleaning the internal part of your body. Then finally, you live in a community whereby you need a collective work. Collective work is that you are living in a community whereby the Muslim children are growing day and night. You have to be able to establish a situation whereby our children will grow and know Islam while they are living Islam and then continue to live Islam as long as they grow, if even you are dead tomorrow. In this regard, you try as much as possible to build a very well uh, Iman, meaning a well faithful community. And to do that, you cannot do it alone. If everyone says that he's going to do it, all the only women is children, definitely we are not going to have any Muslim community. That's why people are uh, struggle everywhere to make sure that they open uh, Islamic schools here and there, they open mosques, they open, they try as much as possible to do uh, what they can, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put blessing on that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that, Ya ayu alladhina amanu alaykum anfusakum la yadurrukum man dhalla idha ahtadaytum. Or you who believe, you have control over yourselves. You have control over how you manage your own uh, affairs. And those who are not believers can never cause harm unto you if only you stick onto the right path. So it is up to you to build your own organization within an organization that is uh, an Islamic. It is not a fight, it is not a war, but only that you are doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah Jalla wa ala, uh, will bless your, your, your community. And within the cleaning of yourself internally, like I mentioned, it's not only, uh, uh, let's say, uh, an individual or the, the one you mean collectively, but also you have to clean your house. Cleaning your house is also to be very, very, if you are married, you try as much as possible to be honest to your wife and the wife also being honest with you. And with that, you can have a very, inshallah, peaceful marriage, peaceful coexistence, and Allah will make barakah in the marriage. And the most dangerous part of it is suspicion. There are those who suspect their wives or women suspecting uh, their husbands. Ali bin Abi Talib said, avoid suspecting your wife. Because by suspecting your wife, you speak about her to people. And then so you do that until people will believe in the suspicion, and that is also bad for you. So you try to be honest to your wife, your wife being honest to you. The same applies to how you deal with your children. Make sure that there is peace in your house every day. And with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless the family. With this, we have come to the end of today's lesson, inshallah, wa ta'ala. I hope that, inshallah, everything that I've said that is right is from Allah. And all that I've said that is right and wrong is from me and from Satan. Allah forgive us all. May Allah accept us as good Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our tongue, purify our ears, purify every part of our body. May Allah accept our dua whenever we ask him. May Allah accept our parents who are dead. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them be jannah. May Allah make their griefs rogotun. May we Jannah, our brothers, sisters, all those who are dead or have taken it in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their arrival at him. And may Allah make their, uh, their arrival be an arrival of Rawadul uh, Jannah in their grave. And also may Allah put them in paradise. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uh, kill us also on the way of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All those who are seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept what they are seeking for. All those who are demanding, whatever they are in. If it is a difficult situation, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Those that have lost certain things within their life, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them more than what they used to have before. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your dua, be it in secret or be it in public or be it open. Anyone who has ever asked me to make dua for him, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept his intention. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him more than what he's seeking for. And if it's a problem, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solve the problem and make it more easy for him. Our brothers and sisters, anywhere that they are, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for them. Those who are seeking work, may Allah give them work. Those who are seeking marriage, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them good spouses. Those who are um, uh, married and also they are seeking children, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them children. Our children, who, those who are having uh, a difficult situation in their school, in, uh, in their life, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. May Allah ease their situations for them. And those also who have children that are having difficulty in taking care of them, Allah SWT make their situation easy for them to be able to take care of their children. Those children that are gone astray, may Allah SWT return them onto the right track. May Allah SWT bless the Ummah. May Allah SWT accept our dua. 
both in secret and also in public. And with this, we have come to the end of today's lesson. Subhanakum Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.